In this video, we will be turning digital images into true film negatives. This is not some Lightroom preset, some editing hack or like in-camera settings. This is a true optical trick, I guess, to create a film negative from a digital photo. When I first heard about this process, I was so eager to try it out and make an experimental video, which is what we're doing today. We're gonna find out if this incredibly expensive service is worth it and if this is truly a hack to get a real film look out of a digital photo. To do this, I'll be using a service called Gamma Tech. They are based out in Arizona, I believe. It is incredibly simple. You go onto their website, you upload your digital images, and a week later, they send you a little envelope like this with your negatives in here. This video is not sponsored by them. They don't know that I'm making this and I paid full price for this service, which I will say is extremely expensive. Per image that you choose to put onto a negative, it's about $10. So I did 11 photos, which cost me $110. There's been a lot of interesting developments in film photography, and I think a more recent one is DSLR scanning, which you might be familiar with, which is a process where you take a digital photo of a film negative as a way to scan it. You use a digital camera. And so the process that we're doing today is essentially the reverse of that. It is taking a film photo of a digital image. First of all, let's talk about why this process even exists. And I think there's two main reasons. The first of those reasons is archiving. In the same way that you might create a backup of a digital image on another hard drive, using this process is a way to create a physical film copy of a digital image that you might care about. It's a way to preserve or store an image in a space other than a digital one. The second reason is just for the doors that it opens to create a different look with your digital images. Once you have that photo on a negative, you can then scan it in digitally. This also opens the doors to things like darkroom printing. You could now essentially make a beautiful optical C print of a digital image, which otherwise is not possible. So obviously that means that this is not something you wanna be doing for every digital photo that you take, but I think for very special projects, this might be worthwhile. An application of this service might actually be something like this project Walking Svalbard, where I shot a mix of digital and film images while I was in the Arctic Circle because my film cameras would stop working because of how cold it was here. That means that this publication is a mix of digital and film photos. And although I do think they look pretty cohesive because of the lighting in the nighttime, I think this would be a nice application to maybe send off a digital image such as this one to more closely match the film images such as these. I have actually chosen some of these digital images to be sent to Gamma Tech to be converted into negatives so we could see what the results are and if they actually match the true film images in the book any closer. Today I'm sitting in front of a Fujifilm SP3000 Frontier film scanner, which belongs to my friend Linus. He used to own a film lab, and this is essentially a lab-grade film scanner. His lab has since closed down, but he kept this scanner afterwards, and he's very kind to let me use it for a bunch of different projects. But today I want to use this scanner because I have my digital negatives back from Gamma Tech. Looking at the negatives here, I'm actually quite surprised because on first impressions, it looks like a normal six by seven negative. But when you look a little bit closer, you notice that things don't quite look right. Like the spacing between the edge of the image and the film rebate is just a little bit different than what you're used to seeing on a normal six by seven medium format negative that was shot through a camera. Also, these came back as Ektar 100, which I thought was quite interesting. I'd be curious to know about why that's the preferred film stock for this process. With that being said, let's get to some scanning because the Frontier is ready to go. So to do this, it's quite simple. You pull out this negative tray, 
and down here you can insert your negatives. Close that up. Wow, that is cool to see. It pops up first in black and white. Oh my gosh. Dude, look at that. Right off the bat too, it's perfectly color balanced. Bro, that's gorgeous. Wow, I was not expecting that. Bro, that's beautiful. Right? I might just shoot digital photos from here on out. You just gotta have $110 every time you want 10 photos. That is magic. You can color correct it more. Wow, unreal. Let's do another image here. Let's see. Whoa, that is crazy. My God, unreal. Let's move on to the next image. Take the negative out. When you insert it into the scanner, it shows up in black and white first as a preview just to position the image. Wow, there it is. That looks so beautiful right off the bat. You can play, of course, with the settings that the Frontier has. It reacts just like a negative does on the scanner, which is crazy. Like, you can color balance exactly like we're used to doing on here if you want to just go crazy with it. It looks great off the bat, though. It does. They, they expose it perfectly. This is also interesting because this is the aspect ratio of the EOS R, which is what I shot this on. And so because that sensor is full frame, it's a different aspect ratio than 6.7, and so you get these black edges at the top and bottom. The spacing on this one's interesting. It's kind of slid to one side of the negative. Wow. Oh, that's crazy. It still looks like the original image, except it's just got that film-like tone curve. Wow, this is stunning. I can't believe this. And the color balance is perfect right off the bat. Again, you can see a little bit of a black edge on each side because it's not a perfect six by seven crop, but that's beautiful. Now dust is also a problem you have to deal with in digital photos. I have to say so far I'm incredibly impressed with what these images are looking like. This is not at all what I expected. I thought this might be kind of gimmicky, but the colors look really beautiful from what I can tell, even on this older monitor, which doesn't necessarily give you the best impressions. The photos look incredible so far. I can't wait to compare these to the true digital images. With that being said, I'm gonna finish scanning the rest of these negatives, just get through them. I have my photos from the apartment sign project, left to do, and the portrait of Randall Park. I'm looking at the photos here and I wanna say I'm very impressed. I mean, they truly have taken on a film look, like the colors and the transition from shadow to highlight is really beautiful and it's not something that I think is easily recreated in a digital way. If you hired a retoucher to try and emulate this kind of look on a digital image, you certainly would be spending a whole lot more than $10 per photo. And this also opens up the possibilities of making a beautiful C print out of a digital photo and so much more. Anything that can be done with a negative can be done with a digital image through this service, which I think is pretty incredible. It definitely has that like Ektar contrast and saturation, which is interesting because Ektar is the film that these negatives came in on. I think for the application it makes sense though because it is the sharpest color film. The photo of Randall Park is interesting to compare because one is a digital photo turned into a negative scanned and the other is just a true film image that was shot in a Mamiya 7 and then scanned. If people find this interesting I'll definitely consider darkroom printing some of these in the future. I'm super curious to hear what people think about this process so 
please let me know your thoughts down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. And finally, thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Squarespace is an incredible all-in-one website building platform that you can use to build your photography portfolio online. I've been using Squarespace for so many years now and they've made it so easy to get a website up and running with my photography. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, you can hit the link in my description for a 14-day free trial of Squarespace. When you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Willem for 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. I'll see you guys next week with another video. Thank you so much for watching. Peace.